Hey guys, Kiwi Sylveon, and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. Mom is back! Uh, and I'm not happy about it. And neither is Angelica. Angelica! I can't do this! You're not trying hard enough. But I... It's almost as if you do not wish to complete your training. Ever since Mother came back, she's been teaching me to use my magic. But her methods are... Well, I can't bring myself to agree with the way she teaches. But this is... A little bird no more. The bird is still alive! It's been trying to escape the dome it's been trapped under this whole time. Your pleading heart will be the end of us all, Angelica. Don't... Do you feel such turmoil every time you have a meal? Do I need to remind you how many animals are killed on a daily basis just for your meals? But this is different. Why can't Mother see that? All you're doing is removing the air in the dome. This lesson is about control. How else are we able how else are we to tell when you're successful when, without such a barometer? <sighs> Mother raises her hand and without any apparent effort manipulates the air in the dome. N now you see how simple it is? I stare at the little bird's lifeless body inside the dome. The sight of it brings back old memories. This happened before. Even then I was not able to save this bird's life. I can't... S I still can't save anything. And because you hesitated, another bird must be brought in. How many birds will it take, Angelica? I need you to focus, dearest heart. We will continue tomorrow, and I expect you to perform as expected. Do you understand? Angelica! I nod my head numbly. Mother opens her arms and beckons me toward her. I reluctantly step toward her so she can embrace me. There's no more warmth in her embrace. There's nothing. Mother strokes my hair. Before I found the gesture endearing and comforting. But now... I feel cold. I do this because I love you, Angelica. You understand, yes? I... The words I want to say are trapped in my throat. I can't. Mother pulls back, a questioning look in her eyes. Say you love me, darling. Of course I love you. I do love her, but things are different now. I can't deny who she is or what she can do. Mother sighs heavily before releasing me and turning around. Varg! The door opens and Varg steps inside immediately. He kneels before us. Your Majesty? Take my daughter back to her room. As you command. Varg rises and bows before going to hold open the door for me. Princess? Good night, Mother. Curtsy and vo follow Vargo to the throne room. Ever since Fritz disappeared that day, the day I woke up, he hasn't returned. The hope that he would return and that Vargo would be destroyed is slowly disappearing. Every morning I wake and find Varg standing outside my door. I become... Every morning I wake up and find Varg 
Outside my door, I become more disheartened. I look at Varg's back as he walks in front of me. How am I supposed to put bring, bring Fitz back? Varg is only getting stronger each day. At this rate, Fritz won't. Eddie Uva. You know that won't work on me anymore, Princess. Fitz used to come when I said that word, but I no longer see any signs that he hears me. Worried about your night? Let me tell you something that might lift your spirits then. He's not gone. What? He doesn't think he can afford to lose. He's not giving up control without a fight. Thought you might want to know. Why are you telling me this? You haven't been yourself the past few days. But why do you care? Varg stops and turns to look at me. He's looking at me the same way Fritz does, always does, with gentle acceptance. I can almost believe I'm looking at Fritz and not Varg. I've been asking myself that same question. I know these feelings for you aren't my own, and yet... Feelings for me? I guess his emotions for you are too strong. It's rubbed off on me, and now I'm stuck caring about you too. Varg's expression changes, a subtle sadness creeping into his eyes. Stupid. We both know who you'll choose when the time comes. What? Varg smiles, but it's devoid of any cheer. Turns around and continues walking without waiting for me. Hurry up, princess. The rest of our walk is silent. The night is deep, dark, and gentle, but I can't find peace or sleep in all the you know, consuming silence. It's been two weeks since Mother's return. And two weeks since I've been able to sleep through the night. Most of my days are spent at Mother's side. When we aren't patrolling, Rolling it in jelly, she's teaching me how to use the tenabarum, readying me as her successor. Every day, it only becomes clearer to me that the kingdom is suffering. The people fear and hate us. It's even worse than it was before. Mother is cruel to everyone, even though I have yet to see them do anything wrong. Then, is this why Father hated her? Your Highness! I beg your forgiveness. My child was not watching where he was going. The man's son had watered out in front of us. The soldier's forces would have crushed the child if the man hadn't pushed him out of the way. The stop on the road caused a delay in our arrival back to the palace. Mother had been out visiting our old friend, a witch. Hmm. Mother? There's a blinding flash of light as Mother draws a sharp shape in the air. When the light clears, the man has disappeared from front of us. He's collapsed against the wall of a nearby building. Ah! Mother threw him into the building? Let us continue. But Mother, that man isn't moving. I don't think he's breathing. Come along, Angelica. Mother, why did you do that? That man, he... Are you questioning me, Angelica? Mother's gaze is cold as steel. Her eyes sharp as a blade. I flinch away from her. You've become soft. This world has changed you while I was sleeping. Don't worry, dearest heart. I will bring you back to what you were, I promise.
Mother smiled at me then, the same smile she would always give me when I was a child. I used to be comforted by the sight of it, but now it terrifies me. And the king... I choked down the lump in my throat. He's gone. He speaks, he eats, but he's not there. But if we're not clear in his actions, it's clear when I look in his eyes. He's right there, and yet I miss him. The frustration makes me wet restless. I stand up so that I can make my way toward the window and stare outside. I'm being ridiculous. Why should I miss him when he has been nothing but neglectful? I've forgotten how he stopped caring about me when he invited his new family into the palace. He treasured them and his kingdom more than he ever loved me. He never valued me. And yet, I would give anything to go back to things how, how things had been. The weight on my shoulders and in my heart is overwhelming. The, only fe the feeling only worsens when I turn my thoughts to another person. Friends. With a sigh, I lean my forehead against the cold glass of the window. Fog says that Fritz is still fighting, so he must still be in there. How can I help him? Fritz? Who? Before I can turn, someone claps a hand over my mouth. The rest of my words are muffled. <coughs> Long time no see. That voice. Jurin? That's right. Remain calm, princess. She slowly lowers her hand. I turn around and stare, uh, surprised to see her here in my room. What are you doing here? She smiles, and some of the weight lit in my heart lifts. We're on a rescue mission. We? At that moment, a man sidesteps into the doorway. His footsteps cautious and soft. Garland? He doesn't turn completely, but cranes his neck to give me a soft smile. Glad to see you're safe, princess. I can barely believe that the two of them are standing here. It's been so long. We apologize for being... late. We've been trying to get into the palace for the last few months, but a powerful shield has been keeping us from entering. Lady Parfait could easily destroy it, but it would have meant destroying the palace as well. The last thing we want is to cause panic amongst the people. Mithros and Varg are crafty. They've been watching over the palace like hawks. It was difficult to speak with Prince Rod when he was being watched around the clock. We needed more time to make sure our rescue mission wouldn't fail. And then how did you find a way inside? Lady Parfait managed to find a weak spot in the shield, but it's thin and only allows a few people into the palace at one time. Garland and I knew this, know this place better than anyone. That's why we're here to rescue you. Sir Laura and Lady Parfait wanted to come, but the shield easily detects witches and fairies. They're waiting for us at the Marking Princess. Was I meant to escape with Rod and Emma range before? Yes, that was the only pl other plan we had, though it didn't go as expected when someone got whiffed of the plans and sent Varg out to kill them. But they tried to save me before and failed. Why did you come for me? They look at me, their expressions baffled. What? What? I cross my arms and look at them. Why would you risk you someone you hate? Princess. Of course we'd come for you. You're part of the market after all. What? Jiren looks at me seriously. Let's go. Jiren heads to the door but stops when she notices that I'm not following her. Coming, princess? How can the market take back take me back after everything I said and done? How can the market accept me back? 
do they even want me to return? I only realized I had spoken loud when Juran answered me. Princess, we wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. We have to leave now. We're running out of time. I can think about this later. My nun followed them up my room. Please take me away. Please, please, please take me away. Take me away. Take me away. Take me back to the park and so I can butt heads with the Laura again. Turn lead the way and I follow after her. Carlin brings up the rear, his eyes alert as he constantly surveys our surroundings. Next around us, the night around us is cold but and still, and but the quiet only makes me more anxious. Varg usually appears in situations like this. Is he not here? And I feel so useless having to be rescued like this. Carly reaches out to place a hand on my shoulder. We're almost out. I'm not, not trusting my own voice. Please. Sorry about that. I don't know when that came out. Hopefully. Hopefully it didn't come out too long ago. From now on, it's going to be right in front of my eye, so I will see it when it pops up. I nod, not trusting my own voice. Shh. Garland stands at attention as we continue to slowly move forward. Eventually, a figure moves to block our path. And what is this? <laughs> I can't move. Jern and Garland, however, already have their swords out. That deadly metal glitters in the gray glow of the moon. And here I thought the fairy had given up. Mithros? Versus a low growl. It's so full of malice it makes the hairs on my back of my neck stand on end. Let us pass. And if I did, where would you be taking the princess? Jiren's shoulders are tense. Garland glares at Mithros from behind her. I could lie, but it'd be easier just to kill you. You're bl as bloodthirsty as ever. Unfortunately, I can't allow your mischief to continue. Sir Mithros has just begun to raise his hand when Jiren darts forward, her so sword gleaming as she raises it to slice his arm. Sir Mithras howls, falling hard to the ground as he curls himself on to Kratos' injury. Go! Quickly! The main being quiet is all but shattered as we run away from Mithros. Though he's in pain, I can still hear his voice call from behind us. Do not think this will be so easy, princess! I ignore him and keep running, not daring to look back. We've been running for a while now. Legs are beginning to go numb. Only a little longer, princess, and we'll be out. You're doing well. I can do no more, more than not as I force myself to keep running. Pathetic. I'm slowing them down so much. There! I can see the exit. Watch out! Jiren falls back to evade the explosion and bumps into me at, in the process. Almost later, however, she is once again standing at the ready with her sword. Carlin sits his hand firmly on my shoulders to help me regain my balance. What was that? A familiar face emerges from the smoke. Her expression is cold. Angelica. Mother. I didn't want to believe Mithros, but here you are. Princess, get back. Mother turns to face Jiren and Garland, her expression full of contempt. I remember you. Jiren Valente. Valente. And you as well, Garland Belrot. I thought I was rid of El Custer's past. We don't work for Sir Alcaster. No, and you and your your pet have changed allegiances, haven't you? What? 
What did you call him? The smile on Mother's face is bright and cruel, since chills trailing down my spine. Is that not what he is? Mother casually waves a hand at Garland, who remains quiet. Quiet? Quiet. He follows you around like a lost puppy. He's so desperate for a scrap of affection that he would do anything for you, regardless of his own pride. It's a marvel how um, well he knows his command commands. Stop it! Come, Garland. Sit, Garland. Good boy, Garland. Shut up! Jiren, don't! Oh, but his words come too late. Jiren rushes forward, her body nothing but a blur, her teeth bared inside of a hatred. Jiren is fast, but Mother is faster. She raises her hand and sends Jiren back with a terrible flash of light as Garland catches her. And he defends his honor as if he were some poor maiden. How oh, pathetic. Garland's voice is soft as he studies Jiren. Jiren, please. She's just trying to get a rise out of you. I know that! Sharon throws his hands off, a murderous look on her eyes, and she glares at Mother. Mother remains in the same place, smiling that terrible smile of hers. She's amused by this. Nothing more. Get out of here. Get the princess out of here, Garland. What are you saying? I'm not leaving you here. Once she's safe, come back for me. Jiren finally turns to look at him, a soft smile on her face. Trust me, Lan. There's a long moment of silence as the two gaze at each other, unspoken words pass between them, and eventually Garland caves. Alright. Both of them tighten their grips on their swords. Are you done? Mother hasn't moved, but her presence in the small tunnel is overwhelming. Her magic smothers the very air. Jiren sinks into a stance, her body loose and poised, seemingly unperturbed. Ready when you are. Mother doesn't attack. Instead, she turns to face me with one graceful movement. Angelica, stop this nonsense. This is not the time for games. Be a good girl. Go back to your room. Dearest one. Sandra's loot and takes strength from Garland's steady presence behind me. What mother is doing is wrong. What she wants isn't right and has never been right. What she's done to the king, what she's done to Angeli. How uh, am I meant to look at her in the same way? My voice is quiet when I finally speak. No. What? I take a deep breath and look her in the eyes. No, I will not return to my room. Mother's expression is unexpectedly calm as she looks at me. My own daughter would choose these traitors and liars over me. Is my love so inconsequential to you? Does she yet ever truly love me? Mother, if your love is what love is meant to be, I don't want it. Mother is not who I thought she was. When I look at her now, all I can see is what she truly is. Evil. Clearly you've become corrupted during my absence. I suppose it must be to work the infernal fairies. Never mind. Once I have destroyed 
each and every one of them, you return to me, my daughter. She raises her hand and like curls around her fingers. But before she ca casts her spell, Jiren is at my mother's side. <laughs> Jiren's sword, sword glitz as it slices through air and then through mother's clothes. Go! Bye! Princess, come on! Jiren, if we leave her alone! Garland pulls me away. Pulls me away from my mother and Jiren as their battle begins. We hear a dull clatter of metal as we run, and we can see the flashes of light even as we escape back the way we came. Garland! We have not gotten far when I force Garland to stop. Garland! It's only when I grab his shoulder that he stops and turns to look at me. Princess? We can't leave her there! Maybe I could convince Mother to let her go. You really think you can convince that witch? I... I can try. My job is to keep you safe. Mother has all the power of the crystal and Tenabarum at her disposal. I force myself to say it. Jurin will not last long. Garland, you have to know this too. Jurin must know as well. G Garland's jaw har hardens as he stares at me. Not truly looking at me, but through me. Garland, please. We can't let, you let Jurin die. No one we might be able to do something about it. Garland stands, stares at the ground, his, his expression conflicted. I know he cares for her, and that's why he must go back for her. Garland closes his eyes briefly. When he opens them, I know he has made this decision. Whee! When we return, the scene is very different. Blood spatters the tunnel. And Jiren's on her knees, bent forward, her face away from us. Mother, my mother is nowhere to be seen. Jiren! Garland is standing in front of me, mindlessly racing towards Jiren. Jiren! Jiren! Not once she seems to come alive. She gasps for out of breath, then coughs. Garland, what are you doing here? I told you to. <coughs> Her voice wavers as Gar Gar Garland crouches down in front of her. He folds himself around her, pulls her gently to his chest. His eyes are shut, uh, shut tight and he buries his face in her hair. Jiren chokes back to sob as she reaches up to hold him tightly. Aww, love. I exhale in relief. <sighs> Both of them are alive and safe. You idiot, I told you to get her out of here. The princess gave me permission to disobey an order. He lifts his head and smiles back at me. She outranks you, Jiren, and at least as far as titles are concerned. Garland slowly guides her to her feet. What happened? The queen disappeared and I... Jiren suddenly stops. We hear it at the same time. A terrible ripping sound. Like it, the air itself is being torn. I see a slither of shadows and unnatural light in the darkness and suddenly realize what is happening. My panicky mind is only able to process everything that happens in slow motion. Mother appears behind Jiren, poised to strike. I see horror in Garland's eyes, and then acceptance and determination. I try to cry out of warning, anything, but I can barely breathe. Garland pushes Jiren towards me and out of the way as he rushes at my mother. At the 
the same time Garland pushes forward, Mother holds out her hand. It only takes a single heartbeat for her to plunge it into Garland's chest. Garland! What a loyal pet. Giving your life for hers. Garland's face crumples in on itself. Even from where I can, I can hear Mother twist her hand inside of him. And how sad. Mother wrenches her bloodied hand out and Garland falls to the ground. You fool. You didn't even tell her that you loved her. You! Jiren runs at my mother, a desperate cry of grief and rage escaping from her. Jiren, no! She's too weak from her own injuries. She can barely hold up her sword. Okay, I'm back. I'm unable to speak or move as Jiren rushes towards her own death. But mother simply sidesteps, her expression disinterested as Jiren falls to her knees. I was kind enough to kill him slowly for you, so you could say your goodbyes. Mother turns to face me. The blood drips from her hand down her dress, where it con congeals and oozes like black tar. Do you understand now, dearest one? This is what you have made me do. This is what I must do to now to all those who have corrupt corrupted you. You were the one who forced my hand. Don't forget that. For a moment, the air in the tunnel disappears, and a terrible silence fills the darkness. By the time the air comes rushing back in my starved lungs, Mother is gone. The tunnel is empty. Lights flicker in the aftermath of her disappearance. The only thing I can hear apart from the rushing of blood in my ears is Jiren's sob. Garland, Garland, no! I make my way slowly towards her. It's like wading slowly through murky water. Jiren is leaving no Garland. Has his head on her lap. He's still breathing. Perfect. Perfect can help him. When I crouch down, I see the open wound Mother left behind. I swallow down the bile that rises in my throat, along with any of my words of comfort. Magic can't fix this. Garland, please. I get down on my knees beside Jiren. This is my fault. Don't cry. Garland! He smiles at her. It's as it's a genuine smile that breaks my heart. Jiren takes her head. No, Garland, you, you can't. Jiren, I am alone. His voice trails off as he closes his eyes. He's really becoming more labored. He gasps one last time before his body stills completely. Garland. I made down on my tongue and bow my head as Jiren howls her loss into the silence of the blood soaked tunnel. We spend some time with Garland in the tunnel. Jiren shakes with silent sobs as she grips his still body. But eventually, Jiren gently removes Garland from her lap as she stands up. She takes his sword and she presses her hand into her fa to her his face one last time. Then she turns and walks away from Garland's body with the sword clutched tightly in one hand. She grips her sword with the other. It takes all that I have to keep up with her. Jiren? Jiren, this is all my- Not now. Her voice is quiet and- all of the more disturbing for it. This is all my fault. Angelica! Jiren! What? What's he doing here? 
not my dad. I like Garland. He was awesome. Oh my god. Tears. Stop. Stop, please. Mons comes running up to us, his eyebrows creased with worry. I've been waiting so long, I was about to... He pauses, fl his eyes flickering to the sword in Juren's hand. Why do you have Garland's sword? Walt's face is pit. Walt's face pales. Where is he? Gone. <laughs> what? Garland is gone. Her hands tighten on the sword she holds. A few mo for a few moments, her soul or slouch. slouch, but. Then she turns away abruptly and continues walking. Let's go. Watch well, turns to me. They say they were going to be simple in and out, so I let them go alone. What happened in there? What do I say? It was my fault. Princess, I'm sure that's not true. I glare at Walt's as tears roll in my eyes. It was my fault. Walt falls silent as he studies my face. Then he sighs before taking my hand. We'll sort this out at the market. Come on. Yeah, I hit my mic. As soon as the market doors close behind us, Jurin collapses. Jurin! Luckily, I'm close enough to catch one of her arms as... Waltz is fast enough to catch the other. Move her to the chair. Together we manage to guide Jiren to the chair. We set her down as gently as we can. I watch as he unfolds on the chair, and that's when I see dark red slashes and te tears in her clothing. Some of her wounds are open and visibly bleeding. She's still bleeding! Waltz pu pulls a cloth from his back pocket and hands it to me. Clean what you can. I'll get Lady Parfait and Rumpel. He runs off, leaving me alone with Jurin. She, it looks like she's bleeding everywhere. I steal myself and kneel by her side. Gently, I reach out and begin to wipe the worst of what I can see. Jurin moans and I clench in sympathy. I'm sorry. I feel a lump in my throat. It's Garland go bad. If I hadn't, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't have. Jiren stoops slightly to put her hand on my cheek. Her touch is cool and gentle. Jiren. There's a softness in her face and an inexplicable kindness in the touch of her hand. After a moment, Jiren slowly nods and her eyes fall closed on a shut side. Wait, is she okay? Jurin? Jurin! Walt! She, she just closed her eyes and she's not speaking. She's not gonna die, is she? Not if I have anything to say about it. Excuse me, princess. Rumpo gently pushes me aside and I let him, hovering over his shoulder as he crouches to inspect Jurin. Well? Princess. Walt steps beside me and gently places his hand on my arm. What? Rumpel needs to work his magic, right? Work his magic now. And? So? Why don't we get you something to drink, hmm? I'm not gonna leave her. Princess, please. We should let Rumple work. I look a bit back over my shoulder, watching how carefully Rumpo attends to Jurin. Okay. Nee. Walt's hand accents my lifeline as he helps me into the tavern area. My legs become weaker with every step. Hi, stranger! 
finally realized that I'm running to her after I barrel into her. I bury my face in my shoulder as I suppress a sob. Dolores' arms come around me, holding me tight at his whatever calm facade I was holding up. Comes apart at the seams. Waltz, would you please get those mugs? Of course. Dolores leads me to one of the benches. One of her arms still around me so she can run my back. Somehow, a simple gesture is helping me calm down. Angelica, are you hurt? I shake my head. <sighs> Thank goodness for that. I st stay in her embrace until Waltz returns to the place something on the table. How are we doing? I pull away reluctantly, dropping my eyes. I'm okay. Laura takes a mug and places it in my hand. Good. Now drink. I don't question and raise the mug to my mouth. Hot chocolate. Delora made this to me before. I take a few deep swallows of the hot, sweet liquid. Better? Yeah. Angelica, can you tell me what happened? Mother found us in the tunnels. Jern to told Garland to get me out. My throat clo threatens to close, but I force the words out. Mother is so strong, and I thought Jern might not survive. So I convinced Garland to go back, and that's when... I stared down at my mug, my hands trembling. It's my fault. It's all my fault. If I hadn't convinced Garland to go back, Mother wouldn't have killed him. The silence in the tavern is deafening. Finish your hot chocolate, Angelica. I obey without a word. Everyone's going to be so angry with me. It's my fault Garland's dead, and it's my fault Jerlyn is injured. Have you heard about your sub family? I know they're gone. And are they. Are they dead, dead as well because of me? Hey, don't look like that. I'll have you know that I had to use a sleeping spell at Prince Rod and Princess Emmeline earlier. I heard about what Jerlyn and Garland were going to do tonight. I don't think I would have been able to stop them from coming along on the rescue mission otherwise. What? You got them out, Princess. Varg would have killed them if you had stepped in. The queen was already waiting at the end of the tunnel on the day of the princess, prince and princess escaped. Wildcaster must have somehow gotten wind of the escape plan, which is why he had Varg try to eliminate them then and there. Security tightened more after that day. <sighs> Thank goodness. And we've been worrying about you ever since you left. Well, ever since you stalled out all those months ago. Dolores' smile is sad as she reaches up to push the hair out of my face. None of this was your fault, Angelica. If anything, it was mine. I and I, Barface, for letting this happen. We tried to help you escape, but we couldn't break the shield around the palace in fear of putting everyone's tide in danger. That's why we had to wait. We never thought we'd have to worry about Hildur being revived. And we thought we would have liked to save you outside of the palace. That's right. I was out of the palace more than a couple of times. Once with Varg, and then another with Mother. We couldn't put the lives of others in danger when Hildur was right there. She would have killed the citizens. Even if I wanted to escape that day I was with Varg, he wouldn't have let me. I grip my now empty mug. Princess. I understand how you feel, and I know it's difficult. But frankly, we have bigger fish to fry. 
I think you realize now what kind of person Hildur is. I do. Then you know what we have to do. I know too well what we must do. In fact, I knew this was bound to happen sooner or later. I started this. I don't know if I could fix everything, and I don't know if I could save Angeli. But no matter how long it takes, I must make things right. I finally looked up at Dolor and nod. We have to stop Mother. Chapter 9. Have a nice square and the big one. Woo! Okay. I'm going to leave it here and we're going to start chapter 9. I almost said chapter 10. That's an exit chapter. Hey, babe. With what looks like payback for what they did to Scarlet. Oh, and her being insane. But mostly for Garland because we care about Garland. Because we got to know him and all the routes, so. Screw you, Hilder. You may be our mother, but fuck you. Anyway, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!